All right, my clock says three. So um, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, so hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, so we have a presentation today, and then we'll do our normal um, bug review. Um, and kind of like what we did with Mary last month, um, we're going to do the presentation first, just so Andrea has plenty of time and all that good stuff. <clears throat> and then we'll do the bugs after that and then just open discussion as we as we do. So um, so we have Andrea here from Equinox and she is going to give us kind of like a demo walkthrough kind of thing of the Angular purchase order line item interface, uh, which, uh, which seems like for years now we have just always called Sprint 4. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but finally it is a real thing. Yeah. So, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to Andrea and have her get started. So let me stop screen sharing somehow. Okay, stop. Okay. Cool. All right. Let me start screen sharing. Evergreen staff client. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Cool. Yes. Let me um move the zoom bar. Why are you here? All right. <laughs> okay. I will um keep kind of half an eye on the chat. Um, if anyone has questions. So I'll um, go ahead and get started. So hi, everyone, and thank you uh, for having me. Like Tiffany said, I'm uh, Andrea Bunt-Snyman. I'm Project Manager for Software Development at Equinox Open Library Initiative. Uh, with me is my colleague, Galen Charlton, also of Equinox. He is our Implementation and IT Manager. And in this context, he is also the um, primary developer behind what Stephanie called Sprint 4, which is purchase order and uh, line item interfaces. So um, I'm going to walk you through those fairly quickly today, uh, and I'm happy to take your questions, but um, you all are the ACK experts, and I am not. <laughs> so um, I, I don't, if I, if you have any really complicated acquisitions questions, I probably can't help you, but I'll do my best to answer questions about the work, and Galen's here to take any uh, technical questions you might have. So Stephanie, um, Stephanie, Tiffany referred to this as Sprint 4. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of background, you might not be familiar with why this is Sprint 4. Um, we've been doing this work, we as an Equinox have been doing this work with um, the Evergreen Community Development Initiative and the, before that MassLink for several years now. Um, and we had several different sprints that have gone out. Sprint 1 was, or Sprint 0 rather, was tools, uh, various tools and like column header stuff that went out in Evergreen 3.4. Uh, Evergreen 3.6 saw Sprint 1, which was uh, providers, and then Sprint 3, which was acquisitions search. Um, Evergreen 3.8 saw the administrative interfaces, which was Sprint 2. And now uh, Evergreen 3.10 last fall saw this Sprint 4, which is the purchase order line item and selection list interfaces. Um, in the future, ECDI has already contracted with uh, Equinox for we, this project has gone on so long and it's gotten so complicated that we had to switch from uh, numbers to letters. <laughs> so now we're on letter sprints. <laughs> so um, we are working on sprint A, uh, a spec for sprint A this quarter for the remainder of ordering. Um, this is the second kind of version of the spec. ECDI came back with some requested changes. So we're working on those. And then we also have under contract um, development for sprint B, which is going to be invoicing and claiming. And then still pending is a future sprint C, which is going to touch uh, patron requests and enhanced EDI message viewer. And I probably should have said at the very beginning of the spiel about the various sprints, is that these are all about um, converting the Angular interfaces or converting the acquisitions interfaces from the old Doja uh, interface to the new Angular interface. It's just been huge and wild and complex. Um, I will be talking about that and some other stuff here, shameless self-promotion. Um, I put a link in the chat for a webinar next week. Um, I'll be talking about this and a lot of current and upcoming Equinox development um, next week. So that's a free webinar if any of you all want to come and hear me um, talk about that and see pictures of a DeLorean raft that my husband built many years ago because it's back to the future of dev. Anyway. So let's uh, start talking about Sprint 4 since that's what you're here for. So obviously, um, Sprint 4 is like the purchase order selection list in line items. That's like the heart of ACK, um, heart of acquisitions. This was an enormous undertaking. This is the likely single biggest piece um, that has been done or will be done as part of this Angular ACK project. 
Um, so, you know, huge kudos not only, of course, to Galen, who was our primary developer at Equinox, but Tiffany Little, our esteemed host here of Pines, contributed the load mark order records interface that I'll be showing you. And then all of this was sort of based on work initially started by Bill Erickson at King County um, in Seattle. So um, I have, in addition to the work, we also rewrote um, the documentation. So it is not in the community repo yet, and that's entirely my fault. But there is a Google Doc there with 48 pages of documentation um, about these interfaces. I am slowly getting that into ASCII doc. I also have, um, just as of just this week, I have finally uh, finished the largest piece of that. Um, and I'm building slowly, but because I'm terrible at Git, uh, a branch to put that into the community repo. So that will be there soon um, in the main documentation. Um, but in the meantime, you, that Google Docs link should be a public link and you guys can take a look at it. Um, this test system that I'm showing you is obviously it's a test system. It does not have the full complexity of configuration the production system would. So let's, without further ado, let's get rolling. I won't spend too much time on selection lists because I know um, that that's sort of a unique workflow that not everyone uses. You can use selection lists like to separate the action of you know selections versus purchase orders. Like if you have two different staff workflows for that. If you have a staff member who does a selector, it acts as a selector and then a separate staff member or department that acts as purchasers, you can divide it that way. Um, but we'll just show that briefly. And this was angularized as um, part of this. So this is what a selection list looks like now. Um, you probably, if you're familiar with acquisitions, you probably see a lot of familiar things here. Uh, all of these various links, um, to items and expanding notes and alerts, et cetera, a link to the catalog, um, you know, links to uh, worksheets. Uh, if, if there are any patron requests, you could see that there, invoices, et cetera. This is uh, the provider. And as you'll notice on these, they give little um, pop-ups, you know, here to, to show, you know, what, um, in case you're not sure, like what does it attack mean? You can hover over that and it says, oh, that's the provider. Um, obviously, the line item itself gives you the um, attributes and then the mark view and mark edit. Um, there is a wording here that show, says that the changes to line items will not result in changes to the catalog record. This is just changes to um, the bi bibliographic metadata associated with the line item. So that will not, if this is connected to a catalog record in your system already, um, which this one is, it will not. Um, propagate that out to the catalog. So it's just changing this one. Um, up here at the top, we have our actions menu. Um, you'll notice that there is kind of universal actions at this top tier, selection list actions um, here, and then uh, purchase order actions on the third tier, which are grayed out because, well, we're in the selection list. Um, some new stuff with Angular, uh, we can do uh, we've got this filt filter and sort option so we can filter by you know title um, is let's see what do we have uh, sky nope what did I do wrong oh it's because it's is and not contains haha -ha. there you go search variables things that librarians should know about <clears throat> sorry y'all are like my fourth meeting of the day, so I apologize if I'm a little bit punchy. Um, so anyway, this is a filter that will return uh, any title in this list that contains sky. In this case, it's just one result. So that's uh, a fun thing. And then we can also sort um, by various ascending and descending axes here. So, you know, you can sort by feet of clay. And if you'll notice, this does take into account non-filing characters. So you don't have the fifth element under T, you have it correctly under F. So that's the same thing here with a hat. It's under H instead of A. So that's nice. And so you can sort these by various dimensions. Um, expand line items. You can um, expand either individually or you can expand up here in the upper right um, and collapse all of them. So, and you can apply um, a line item note to all items and, read, and make that public. Uh, if you use EDI and want that to be transmitted as part of your EDI data. So that is um, selections list. So let me um, move on over to uh, purchase orders. Because I get the feeling the purchase orders are probably used more, more, I mean, 
you have to use purchase orders. You don't have to use selections lists. So, um, yeah. Here it is. Okay, purchase order that I created yesterday. Preparation for this. Um, so here we are. Um, the purchase order. You can see now we have our purchase order actions available. These are the ones that make sense here. Um, these are pending. They obviously, this is, they cannot be activated yet because blind items have no price yet. There's um, the same filter and sort, filter. I always want to say filter and sort, filter and sort options here, like you had before. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to add some line items. Here and for selection, you can select um, individual ones, and it tells you right here. You can do this in selections list too. You can select individual line items, and this count will increment right here. You can select all line items in the page. So I have this is 33 items in my page here, or you can select all line items, which will go across page. And actually, let me show you what that looks like. Let me drop my page count down to 25 here. And this is sticky, this row counter. So if you set that, that should stay at whatever you set it at every time you load this interface. So anyway, in this case, if I do line items and page, it selects all 25. If I do all line items, it selects all 33 of them. So since I have all line items selected, I'm going to add items. So this is um, batch uh, item add adder. Uh, here. And you can add, you know, one or several items. I'm going to add two items to each branch. Um, owning branch defaults to BR1 because that's where my workstation is located. I'm going to say that this is going to go in, you know, new arrivals. Um, I don't care about the collection code right now, but you can fill out the collection code there if you want. Um, and fund, I'm going to pick uh, AD 2022. Um, if you can see, this is the styling for uh, fund at its warning level here. And I don't, oh, I'm sorry, that's a uh, warning level. So that yellow under the juvenile 2022 BR1 is a fund at its warning level. And then this is a fund at its stop level. But I believe that there was just a pull request to style those a little bit more accessibility friendly. Um, so those that's going to change a little bit. So here's our fund. And I'm going to batch update that. Um, so that batch updates my items down here below, and I'm going to apply. And so it's going to spin the little uh, thingy progress bar. And now I have two items on every line. If I expand this, you can see here's my new items on every line. Um, and this is, you know, where you'd add price here is in the price line. And as you add that, you can see this estimated amount goes up for uh, each one. So that um, gets you, you know, your basic purchase order uh, stuff. Other things here, let's see, we have um, various uh, uh, identifier numbers that can be selected. Like this one has two ISBNs, so it gives you the choice of one, and that's what this little digit do tells you. Our status is pending order, and as you can see, these colors, the familiar colors are there for you know, new, on order, pending order, canceled, et cetera. Um, and my proudest accomplishment in the documentation actually is that I think, knock on wood, that I figured out how to get ASCII doctor to display those colors in the document. Um, we'll see, we'll see when I push it. It'll be a fun learning experience. Um, and then on each line item, of course, like I've got the link to the catalog, which this one had previously had catalog records loaded. So that links to that record directly in your catalog. Um, you can see, what import queue it came in on, which again, this will open a new tab and show you, you know, that yesterday or Monday, I imported these records um, as part of my import queue here and um, et cetera. And as the purchase order moves through uh, its various stages, you know, you'll get, when you activate it, obviously the money will move over to encumbered. It will then move over to paid once you have um, paid the invoice, so going to show you one that has been invoiced and paid. Let me go back. Oh, Andrea, there yeah. was a comment in oh, chat. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry. No, you're okay. I'm going to check chat for you. Thank um, you. It said, can we see the worksheet? 
yes, you can see the worksheet. Here is the worksheet. So this is a um, worksheet that you would print out with your, with your items. And I don't have um, items loaded in this. Uh, so it doesn't have barcodes, call numbers, um, et cetera. I can actually, when I go to the um, one that has been received, I will uh, show you a worksheet with, with more information on it. But this is a printable, you know, kind of summary of what you have and whether there's holds on it, et cetera, where the, um, you know, this, this information is designed to be printable if you need it and print it out. So good question. Thank you. Oh, Galen is very optimistic that I have achieved colors with Ask After. He is, that's because I bragged the other day and I'm like, look, I did this thing. Ha ha. Um, so, and he, he verified that it should work. So fingers crossed, if it did work. All right. Let, let us look at another purchase order. So I'm going to look at this one because this one is received. Um, my very clever name of ABN 2023.02.062. Because that's actually another thing. If I tried to rename this to that, oh, it would let me. Oops, that's a bug. Well, it shouldn't let me do that, but it did. So I'll look into that more. This is a test system, and it's a test system that some of you might recognize um, from testing this for Sprint uh, for 3.10. And so this has had a lot of stuff thrown at it. This might be a little bit wonky in terms of data. Anyway. Um, so this is a purchase order that I had uh, ordered and received and invoiced. So um, now I can show you the worksheet for this. This has those on order um, ACK records. It has the on order barcode um, and call number. It has uh, the receive date here. Um, I didn't put any notes on it. Nothing was delayed or canceled. So this shows you a worksheet off of um, off of a received item and the extra detail. Um, and then is the worksheet then, print template part yeah, of the new okay. server templates or is it still an action trigger? I believe, and Galen, please correct me if I'm incorrect, but I believe it is still an action trigger print template. Um, and uh, that's uh, correct. It's uh, still action uh, trigger. Okay, thank you. So um, here you can also see my invoices. I clicked, sorry. I clicked up here on invoice. Um, there's one invoice associated with this purchase order. Um, you can also create or link an additional invoice here. I don't need to do that, obviously, because my things are paid. And you can see they are highlighted in red and marked paid. Um, this line has the copy. It'll direct you back to the selection list. And all again, all of the familiar things that go with your purchase orders. Um, invoices are not yet. Uh, angularized. So this takes me to the old uh, dojo invoice. And here's my invoice details. You know, you can see that I paid it and closed the invoice. Um, we are going to be working on this, like I said, though, with uh, Sprint B, which is coming up next quarter. She says, shakily, I should never say these things about my calendar in front of me. I am like 90% sure that we're working on that next quarter. <laughs> um, so let me see. Oh, I didn't mean to close my PO. to go back to my PO. So um, any, any questions? I know I sort of blew through that like pretty quickly and I kind of didn't super do it according to my plan. Um, oh, and Galen updated um, that the worksheet is using the new server side print templates. So correction there. So worksheet is using that. Anyway, I know I went through that pretty quickly, but you guys are uh, the experts. So before I move over into um, load mark order records, is there anything that you want to see that I haven't shown necessarily in these purchase order and um, line item and uh, section list interfaces? <clears throat> uh, maybe. An I was jotting notes, um, maybe clicking down into items. So, cause now you can oh, right, uh, right. Re receive things down there. Well, you could always receive things down there, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, so these are already received. So I'll pull up a different PO, but yeah, there's. Um... Or down, if you click items where it's items three. Right. Yeah. There you go. There. Unreceive here, let's unreceive one so we can receive it then. 
Or is it going to yell at me if I do that since I've paid for it? Uh, let's let's no, find out. I don't out. think it cares. Cool. It does not care. Anyway, so I mark that item as unreceived. Um, and then here you can mark receive or cancel um, if you want to cancel. And then, of course, this gives you your various canceled reasons. And of course, Evergreen treats it differently based on whether it's a cancel, cancel, or a delay. And that's all configurable in um, acquisitions ad mail, your various cancel reasons and whether they keep debits or et cetera. So that is where you can receive single items. So I will just receive it again. And um, oh, except it doesn't want me to save changes. So this is where we run up against Andrea and her lack of detailed act knowledge. Okay, so it's still, I guess I don't have to, I guess it's saving changes is only for save, changing data and not receiving. And you can see here that it changed the receiver from admin, which is where I received it the other day to VR1, VRead, who is me right now. Um, is manual claiming at the item level not possible anymore until sprint B? No, you can um, claim at the item level. You do that right here in the actions menu. Um, you click claims, and then here is your uh, claim that you do on each uh, item. And so you can select one or all here to do your claim type um, and you know claim note. And thank you to whoever uh, set up claim types on this test server, because I sure didn't the other day when I did those. So it was probably might have even been one of you. So <laughs> thank you for whoever set up claim types on this test server, because it was not me. It might have been, but I, I've since forgotten it probably wasn't. Anyway, and then again, if you want to set a claim policy for an item, you can select them and you know pick a claim policy to apply. And then if it's been, you know, then you can claim individually the line item. Let's see other things. You can open holdings view. This takes you into the catalog and shows you here's your on order records in the holdings view. Um, yeah, so all of the all of the things are there. Um, one other thing I did want to point out uh, is the show PO and legacy interface. And there's also a link on um, the selection list for this. This is controlled by a library setting uh, that I have obviously, and it is disabled by default, or rather the null unset value for the uh, library setting will not show this link. But if you enable the library setting, it will show, um, give you this link at your whatever workstation location that the setting is true for. And that gives you this link, which will open a new page. If for whatever reason, you still need to see um, the thing in the old dojo, or if you're used to looking at dojo and just want to compare, you know, while you're getting used to Angular, you can do that with both purchase orders and selections lists. But if you don't want people to see that um, old view, you can disable or just leave the library setting alone and it will hide that link and you won't see it. Um, search legacy. I believe, and this is going to be another one for Galen, I think that that legacy search interface link is there regardless. I think the library setting just controls the purchase order and line it, or the purchase order and selection list display of that link. Yeah, I believe that's uh, the case. Yeah. So, because this was already there. And that, again, for those of you who don't know, this shows you the old um, dojo search if you need to do things there. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to close this because dojo is ugly. Um, any, any other, I didn't show direct charges, I guess. Um, I can't really. do that, I guess, on a received PO, but I can actually go back and show that. Let's see, it was 71, I think. Was... Yeah, there is also, and this is recorded in the documentation, there is a URL, different URL pattern for the Dojo view versus the Angular view of the PO and the selection list. And so you can like manually, like look at a different URL if you need to. And I put the URL pattern in the documentation for those. So let's do a direct charge. So down here, since this is an open PO still, you can do new charge and then you do your charge type and it gives you the various 
ones that you, oops, that you can use here. Um, that lets you pick a fund, you know, title description. And, you know, you can save that. And that adds that direct charge um, to your, to your um, PO. And you can see that that's now accounted for up here as well. So um, notes, I don't think we did notes. So this is where you can do notes, um, you know, a vendor public note. Um, and this is the note on the PO and I made it vendor public, which if you use a EDI, it will transmit with your order. Um, if you don't, you know, you'll need to manually let your vendor know about it. Um, for also for notes and alerts down here, you can create them on the in individual, um, you know, line item here, either here to make that vendor public for that note, or you can also create an alert, you know, let's say it has lots of folds. Um, no, and then, no, well, I guess I didn't look at the <laughs> alert types either. So we'll pretend that that says alert or something. And then when this line item is received, um, that, or when this purchase order or this line item is received, it'll pop up an alert saying, hey, has lots of folds. So, and if you have multiple of these alerts on a PO that you're receiving, you'll sort of be able to click through each of them individually and do that. Um, is there a way to link direct charge to an invoice? Um, that, that I'm actually not sure about. Um, hmm. Does anybody know in the in the peanut gallery? Uh, I don't. I can remember. set up a yeah. So I can set up a real quick test, but um, I don't remember see. if you create um an invoice from that PO if it will just create the direct charge. I don't remember. Right. Um, I think it does, but uh, Andrea's test uh, will confirm one way or one way or the other but in any event um the work uh, done uh didn't really touch on the invoicing uh, interface so it right. uh, will follow whatever the dojo interface is uh, doing but um seeing your net in uh, chat uh, jennifer um that really does strike me as uh, something uh, to Ah, I see. Um, yeah, it does uh, strike me as uh, something uh, to look at uh, when the invoice interface uh, gets uh, anchorized. Yep, see here, what we're seeing is how fast can Andrea build a dummy PO? <laughs> An item that is activatable. Hey, ta-da. All right, so I have um, my order here with my one $5 item and $1 estimated cost. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to activate it without loading items. So I don't have to deal with that. Um, let's receive this. Mark received. You can also um, obviously mark received here from the actions menu at the upper right um, or from here from the line item actions menu. All right. So let's create an invoice. Um, and it does. Now, is that what you're talking about, Jennifer? So if you create a list, but you can't move it individually. Okay, so let's go back. Do we want to maybe link it then to an invoice? Can we do that? So you want to be able to link just the direct charge and not like the direct charge and all the stuff. Is that correct? Because I'm not seeing that that is. Oh, I also added it to a closed invoice. So this is shows you that I know what I'm doing here. Yeah, I don't, I am not seeing a way to do that. But again, I refer you to my original disclaimer of I am not anywhere near as knowledgeable um, at ACK as you all are. And as Galen said, we didn't touch the invoicing or any of that really underlying 
logic there. So my sense is that if it can't do it now, we probably still can't do that. But that is um, definitely a valid wish list item for sure. I didn't remember um, um, when you were linking it to the invoice, I didn't remember that it would put over the direct charge, just linking it. So maybe hmm. I just don't remember that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I was, well, I was also trying to link it to a closed invoice, so. Um, you know, I was screwing that up too, because <laughs> like, you know, here it is, I'm a closed invoice, yay. Um, there, there's a there's a pull request for that. So for what it's yeah, worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't put new things on the closing voice, you genius. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um yeah, no, I did pull it over. And this is, you know, my um item there that is also obviously because this is a closed invoice. Um so yeah, it does pull it over, but I don't think you can pull it over individually. Whoops. Can I ask about the disencumber on uh -huh. the direct charges? Um, yeah, and I haven't I haven't tinkered with it too much. Is it intended to completely disencumber that entire direct charge, or is it like a partial? You know, like I encumbered fifteen dollars, and I want to like disencumber a dollar. You know, so it's only fourteen dollars. Is it a partial or is it a full? It is the full one, but there is something. Oh, now my brain is trying to dig up. There is something. It's in the documentation. Um, special about encumber charges. Let me let me refer to the documentation. Um, so in this case, it is just removing the full like that line item. Now, if you had multiple, um, oh no, because I received this one. But if you had added multiple direct charges, you would see that disencumber for each individual direct charge. But I don't think you can just disencumber like a portion of that single direct charge. And while I try to find my documentation um, link here, Galen, if I'm wrong, you can. Right. Um, Say yeah, something. Yeah, yeah I confirm uh, that it's uh, all uh, or nothing uh, for each uh, direct uh, charge. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Like like Jennifer said, we don't tend to use direct charges a lot on purchase orders because, you know, up until now they, well, I guess still they don't talk great with invoices. So a lot of times we were like double booking funds. You know, uh -huh. it, would, it would be a direct charge on the invoice and also the same one on the purchase order, so. Right, right. So I haven't, I haven't tinkered with them very much on purchase orders, so. The, what I wrote in the documentation six months ago is um, there's a disencumbered charge button visible under select circumstances, purchase order is active or received but not canceled, fund debit is not already zero, fund debit is not already linked to an invoice. So, um, and then they does something different with blanket orders. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else uh, here in the purchase order area? I do, and I did end up with lots of new tabs. All right, so I'm gonna, um, if you do pop into the chat, um, but I'm going to move over not to Mark Federated Search, load mark order records. So this is the new um, load mark order records interface um, that, that Tiffany did, and this went in as part of the um, Sprint 4 work as well. This should look very familiar. Uh, it's you know pretty much a lot of the exact same stuff that you see in the regular mark batch import edit, importer. Um, with the exception of these specific ACK options, like you can create a purchase order, um, activate it automatically. Um, from here, you can select fiscal year. Oops, you can select fiscal years, and you can add um, to um, to an existing selection list or a, a new selection list. I think, yeah, yes. So, um, and obviously provider. So, other than these kind of things up here, you know, it's very familiar. You create a queue, you pick your file, you upload it, um, you select your merge options, et cetera. So that, and it, it does the thing. And I can show you how it does the thing, but I, I'm sure that you all know how it does the thing. And, you know, here, as I showed earlier, um, you know, the other day when I was preparing for this, I did like, this is a, um, 
Oh no, this one must have already been in here because I definitely didn't start preparing for this talk in November of last year. Uh, it was Ab Horson, I guess, was the one that I loaded the batch for. Anyway, so that's how I got that that in there. And you'll also see this if you um, you know, uh, want to load bibs and items from a selection list to a purchase order. Um, so you know, if you're create um, if you move these items over to a purchase order, and then you know from the purchase order you can select this load bibs and items action, and it will show you this. Uh, low mark order records interface as well. So it's also very pretty and angularized. So, oh, and there's a legacy upload link here. If for some reason you want to do things in Dojo. And actually that's um, to refer back to that earlier question, Galen, is the uh, library setting control this one as well, or is that one there regardless? Um, it's uh, there uh, regardless, I believe. Okay, so there's your things. Ooh, um, that is a good question, Jennifer. The question is, does Inspect Q um, recognize app records as a Q type? And um, I don't think it, I think that is a separate bug that has um, been encountered, but let's go back to one of my purchase orders. So I can show you that. Yeah. Um, word Q. Yeah. No, it does not. Um, Yeah, and that is, I know that we ran into the, we ran, I've run into that bug before. Um, I know that that is an existing bug. So, yeah, actually, that's not where I wanted to look at again. Yeah, okay, right. So, it does not. Sorry, I was looking in the wrong place. Um, which some of you might have been telling me in the chat. <laughs> but yeah, so this one, um, you know, it's an act type, but it's still in bibliographic records erroneously. Um, so. I'm not sure why it's not showing the ones I did recently, but anyway. Oh, probably because I didn't do them through here. Right. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head that bug, but I know it is out there about the uh, cues being um, not properly being acknowledged as acquisitions cues in the interface. So. Anything else? I know you guys have other things to talk about and you've been very attentive, so I don't want to take up all your time. So one last other app related thing before I go. Um, this is uh, in an earlier meeting today. Um, the uh, in an earlier meeting, this oh sorry I was reading I, I can't read two things at once. Um, Galen, do you know the answer to Jennifer's question about what file translations are in? While I talk about this other thing, um. The other thing is that I had a meeting earlier with the uh, acquisitions, acquisition, that's you guys, um, the authorities working group uh, for the community. And we talked a little bit about King County Library Systems, um, some of their customizations that they have that they might be interested in bringing into the community. And one of them um, is an update items tool that uh, lets acquisition staff make um, certain kind of constrained uh, item updates from the bib record, like associated with a specific. PO. Um, and it's, you know, right now just a KCLS customization, but Bill Erickson said he would be certainly happy to uh, show it to you all at a future acquisitions interest group meeting. So 
um, that's just something, Tiffany, if you want to reach out to Bill, that's something that looks like it might be a cool uh, act tool. And I know that, like I said, that KCLS is interested in, you know, working to bring some of those over into the community repo. And I'm sure that you guys would have a lot of, um, a lot of feedback and, you know, ways to, like, like things to say to him about that. Because um, of course, obviously, since it's a KCLS customization, it's um, written for KCLS's acquisitions people. And there might be some, um, different parameters to make it useful for the larger acquisitions community. So just putting that out there. If you're interested in that call, call Bill. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you for the heads up. I totally yeah. was not there. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's a neat little, um, neat little interface. And um, I said, I'm, I'm like, I'm talking to the acquisitions people this afternoon. So he said that I could let you guys know that if you wanted to have him come in and talk about it. Um, Jennifer, I don't, know the answer to your question about the translations. Um, oh, there you go. Galen's got the um, transla translations link there. Um, one other question now, this is an Angular, is there a potential for PO actions menu to have new customized actions option that the staff catalog has? Um, in theory, but this is kind of a different implementation of eg grid like they're both angular grids but this isn't like the super stock um eg grid right no so you can hide action so let me show for those who um if there's those of you who don't know what jennifer is referring to here let me find another angular grid um that's not here we go so here in um this I mean, this is not really a great example because there's not a lot of actions here, but in this grid, which is an Angular grid, you can remove, uh, make visible certain actions. There's only two actions on this grid, but that way when you, um, a good example is actually in the cataloging interface where they, there's like 8,432 actions and you can selectively remove them. So um, that is, you know, I, I'm not going to say, through open source, all things are possible, right? But um, this is a little bit of a different thing than this. So I, my sense is that that uh, action selector cannot be like just straight shoved into here. But yeah, it is a great wish list bug. Because um, yes, I can definitely see why you'd want to hide some actions. If you guys like don't use selection list, for example, then you could hide all of these. Or if you know, um, you know, you don't want to. Uh, that ever use brief records or whatever, you can hide the, the various actions there. So being managed by central staff is a whole separate wishlist book because the current implementation of the actions selector is, I believe, workstation. It might be a user setting. Um, regardless, it's definitely not centrally managed. So to see this, like I can actually show you Nope. Um, catalog. So this is what people are referring to here in the um, holdings view. It, this is where it's like the most useful because ta-da, there's like 40 actions. And this is where this grid menu is super helpful. And you can, you know, remove the ones that you are interested in using. Like, you know, I'm clicking at random, but like if you don't use booking at all, you can hide all three of these booking actions. But again, I believe it is. Um, yeah, and I, Mary, I understand that it is hurting cats to um, you know, get people to set their workstations. I understand that, but it's a whole different wishlist bug to make that a, um, something that can be propagated out, so. All right, anything else? By the way, if you haven't, if you hadn't haven't read this trilogy by Garth Nix, it's fantastic. The second book is all about a librarian. Um, it's my plug for Garth Nix and the Ab Horson trilogy. Okay. I am gonna I think I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh my god, where do my Zoom controls go? I'm either gonna stop sharing or Tiffany's gonna kick me off. <laughs> I don't actually know how to kick you off. So wait, wait, I think I found it. Okay. No, I don't want new share. Oh, stop share. There we go. Ta-da. All right. 
Thank you. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Andrea. Okay. Am I, am, yeah, yeah, am I sharing now? You are. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. I lost my stuff. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. That was really awesome. And it's really good to watch someone else like walk through it all. So I really appreciate you coming and walking sure. everybody through. So you're welcome. And thank you for calling it walking and not stumbling. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so we have like 15 minutes or so um so i'm not going to highlight like all of the bugs that i have here um i am going to call out a couple of them so the first two um so well i should i should back up and i should say so pines is running 310 in production right now we upgraded um in January. So all of the stuff that Andrea showed we have in production. And good news is that it works in production. <laughs> and um, it's only most of these things are just like small things, um, like, uh, <laughs> uh, like, um, where is it the alert box like Andrea was showing you. This one right here is just flipping the position. So like, Right now, like Andrea was showing, the text box is first instead of the selector. So it just flip flops the order. So most of them are like small things. And so that's why these all have pull requests because I made just a little fix for them. Um, so that's good news. Uh, there are two, like I, I consider them like high priority bugs. So, but they're really persnickety. So like there's, let's open it real quick. Um, we go let's make it bigger bigger so there's this one and then what i personally think is the same thing but under a different flavor or acting weirdly is this chrome crashing um and so because yeah it it i get the same behavior so i think it's the same thing so like basically and i don't want to do it because it is like catastrophic to your chrome i would lose you guys um, but basically, if you log out or you or you're timed out, like if you're timed out, like do a temporary operator change and you time out and you're as far as I've seen on an angular page and it's especially bad in one of the new angular act pages, your Chrome just just is horrible. <laughs> like if you do happen to have the console open when it happens, you can just see the console like flooding with errors and like your CPU goes up to like 100% used, your RAM goes up. So it's, um, it's and like you can't do anything in Chrome. Like I have to kill Chrome entirely and it's a huge pain. So, because a lot of times I'll be switching operators or I'll like log out. It, this even happens if you log out. So like if you're on a PO and you log out, it kills it, it it's stinks. Um, so, this, I, I think this is high, high priority. Um, and I see Galen saying something, let's see. I'm 90% sure that it has to do with broadcast message handling between tables. When you do an operator change, if you have a single tab, it's less of an issue. Oh, yay, Galen has some ideas for how to debug it. That would be awesome because because I change my users so often, I don't think about what page I'm on. So I'm often on the purchase order page. And so as soon as I log out and like your, your login page, the little red bars go gray. And as soon as I see that, I'm like, dang it. <laughs> because it's it's so bad, like your whole computer freaks out. Um, so yeah, if you have something uh, like some ideas for working on that, that would be awesome, Caitlin, because it, it's no good. Um, so there's that one and that I think that I wanted to specifically call out as not, not great. And then this one is more of a angular specific, uh, not angular, I'm sorry, acquisition specific, specific one. Um, let me open it. And I renamed it. Um, and now it sounds like the cookie monster. Um, but basically let me open up a purchase order and I will show you what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. Um, so that's not, there's only one. Okay, so, and you can see my lovely naming of titles. So basically we found, um, once we put this on production and people actually started using it, we saw that our actor drones and our act drones were 
being eaten like almost immediately. And so we were getting tons of white screens as soon as we upgraded. So come to find out that um, every time you expand, especially if you expand all, so, and it's, I'm tinkering right now, so it doesn't actually show what it normally does. Um, but every time you do expand or expand all, it like does all of the checks for all of each of these individual items. So it was doing three different perm checks for every item, which was eating actor drones. And then it's also doing some, some, something that it's eating act drones. I don't remember what it is, um, but it does it if you expand all. It also would do it if you go down into items on, <clears throat> on a already ordered purchase order because it's read only. So basically it's like the, this parabola. Oh, that's gonna be on YouTube now, me saying that. But <laughs> let's look for pending one real quick. Hold on, pending. Okay. So basically it's that the batch, batch, batch updater. Oh, it's broken because I broke it. Anyway, the batch updater is essentially like embedded, right? So whenever we expand it, it's in read-only mode, but I guess it doesn't realize that it's in read-only mode. And so it's running all the normal like perm checks and stuff. And so it's just eating things. Um, so yeah, like we had to bump all our drones up pretty high and it's still getting eaten. So, um, so that one's a pretty high uh, priority one. For us so because we're still getting white screens periodically not as bad but um yeah so that that's something um and if you have any ideas on that one galen that'd be awesome because so far as you can see from how i've broken it uh i i'm don't have any so far <laughs> so um but yeah um and yeah, uh, I also uh, have uh, a couple ideas. Uh, uh, you know, one's uh, a mitigation for the read only uh, case, but uh, the other is also some uh, thoughts about a more uh, general, uh, general fix uh, for the uh, selector widgets uh, that need to do uh, perm checks. Awesome. That'd be great. I am very looking forward to that. <laughs> Thank you. So, so good news, those are the only two like actual problem problems that we have had since upgrading. So that's good. Um, the rest of them, like I said, are small things like uh, the batch updater wasn't saving circ mod, like whatever you would put the circ mod in, it didn't save to the line item and it was just a typo. So that was easy fix. Um, and uh, one thing I did change is if you're in search, um, and you clicked on this, it would take you to the purchase order with like that line item focused, like it would hop you down on the page. And so I made a fix where this takes you down into the like item detail. So like if I was gonna receive, so like it doesn't have the, the fix on here, but it takes you down into here instead, instead of just onto the PO directly. Um, which was partially due to um, the issue where these were not reloading. When, so like when you activated, the purchase order didn't reload. So I fixed that, yay, that's great. But the result of that was that like the focusing of the line item couldn't do that. Like it would just make the purchase order spin and spin and spin forever. So, so that was partially, um, I thought it did make sense but it was also in, in advancement of, of fixing the, the purchase order reloading. Um, so yeah. Uh, what else was I gonna tell you guys? Oh, um, there is one that if you wanna take a look at, at some point, um, this is kind of like a needs discussion kind of thing. So as I was looking through some of our purchase orders, I noticed that they all kind of end up in like the quote unquote received state, but really they're not always received. Like that's not always like what's actually happened with them. Um, as you can see, I have sort of these like different options here. So I was wondering if there is a different word that would 
make more sense for a finished purchase order. So, um, so I sort of was Googling around and um, apparently a lot of them will say complete. So, but if you have any other ideas or if you think complete is fine, or if you think we should leave it as is, whatever. Um, I just wanted to draw your attention to this one because this one's specifically uh, like a needs discussion bug. So, um, there was something else I want to tell you guys. Oh, can I ask you guys real quick since we have four minutes? So, I guess this might also be a needs discussion. But um, so the way that Pines catalogers work is with on order holds is we transfer our items to like quote unquote good OCLC records, like if they're on an ACK record. And if you have holds on the ACK record, you have to move them over too. And it's kind of like a two step process. You have to make sure that there are some holds there and then you have to transfer those and then you have to transfer your items. So the wish list is just to be able to do that all kind of in one thing in one go. Um, but my question was, is that how would you decide which holds should move? Like, should they be by the system? Like, how do you, how would you decide which ones should, should go over? I didn't know if you guys had any thoughts on that one. If you don't, it's okay. I just figured I'd call it out. Um, Tiffany, our yes. workflow is a little different. We overlay the uh, vendor record with the OCLC record, so there's no moving things around. And if the uh, exactly. vendor record matches, um, um, is a duplicate, we merge the, the bid records. So I think everything goes that way too. Okay. You are correct, because our OCLC, OCLC records overlay the kind of on order bibs and therefore the holds go with that when they merge. Is there, as far as like then, um, as uh, taking ACK out of it then. So as far as like cataloging, is there any like use case that you might use this or not really? I don't think we would. Okay. We definitely do. And we would not want libraries moving holds for other libraries, whether that's a checkbox or um, restricted by permissions to make it not possible for you to accidentally move somebody else's holds. Um, but the, I guess the holds would need to be tied, like the permissions would need to be tied based on pickup library because with our reciprocal borrowing, we have 70 libraries whose patrons can place holds and pick up at any of the 70 libraries or 50 libraries, however many it actually is. But we run into this quite a bit with items, or sorry, uh, yeah, items get moved, but the holds don't. So uh, do you guys mostly have, um, would it be like your libraries move their own, like they do cataloging at that library, or do you have any like centralized kind of like systems where they would move, you know, for all these five branches? Uh, any of our systems could potentially move at the system level, but the rest of them, any single branch libraries would just be moving their own. Um, sometimes people realize that the item that their, or sorry, the record that their item is attached to doesn't actually match their item um, and then either need to move it to a different record or bring in a different record to move it to. How does it know, uh, that's probably a longer question. How does it know if you can move items to another record at all? Um, so part of it is that um, it uh, tries to uh, avoid asking the question at all. Um, so for copy level holds, um, that's easy. The 
hold uh, always follows uh, the item uh, in effect, uh, no matter which uh, paper record uh, it's uh, attached uh, to you. Um, similarly, if you're overlaying a record, um, that's easy. Um, if you're merging two paper records uh, together, um, that's easy, uh, assuming that uh, you know, you're not doing something that's weird uh, around uh, the meta record uh, that would be attached uh, between the two bibs. Um, but I must admit, at first blush, uh, I'm a bit at a loss uh, about uh, how you would be moving holds uh, for subsets of items uh, attached uh, to a title that was on I think anything other than a basis of, you know, doing it uh, for, uh, you know, and in fact, blah, is associated uh, with uh, the items. Um, and yes, uh, my cat, uh, you know, is also very concerned uh, about uh, the potential for edge cases, um, trying to do uh, it uh, piecemeal. Um, one question I have, Tiffany, is when you're doing the transfers of items, um, is it that you're moving items um, piecemeal as the libraries uh, actually receive uh, the um, uh, materials? Yes. So, so like if, if they end up on an ACK record, then they get the items in and they can catalog with item in hand so they can find the matching OCLC record. And so they're moving their items and holds from the ACK record to the OCLC record. And it may be that they move, you know, five items, but they're not moving it until they have basically, yeah, until it's received. So you don't use a merge profile in order to find duplicate bibs like the OCLC record and the ACK or on order bib record having similarities and there being a merge profile to say these two are the same and to merge them together so that your holds would follow? No, because in Pines we do like one by one, like they have to search in Pines first and then go find if there's an OCLC record like through Z3950. If one, if one exists, like if one doesn't exist in Pines, then go through Z3950. So they'd use all Z39.50. Okay, that might explain. Okay. Yeah, I bring in, I batch import OCLC records into our Evergreen North Carolina Cardinal Consortium. Yeah. That's what we do yeah. too, but if I had to use Z3950, I would just tell to overlay a target record. And Correct. I find That's my, my Evergreen record in say this is a target and then I bring the uh, incoming record and say overlay this. So, so far we, so I think we originally started doing that. And I think the idea was because we have so many different libraries um, that are using ACK, they might all end up on this acquisitions record that might be pretty brief, but what they actually ordered might not all match. You know what I mean? Like it's probably not happening super often, but the idea is that if we overlay it with this OCLC record, then what they ordered doesn't match anymore. I don't know if that makes sense if I said that well. Yeah, I think that's what happens with ours too sometimes is everybody ends up on the same on order record, but the items sometimes are different additions. Okay, well, um, so we're four minutes over. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut us off <laughs> uh, because I want to be respectful of your time. Um, oh, okay. So Jennifer said, uh, if the pull request ones on our test server, then you can test them. That'd be great. Um, I will put them probably on my test server so, um, so that they can be tested. Um, so yeah, so thank you again to Andrea and to Galen. Um, that was awesome and I really appreciate you guys. And for everyone else, I am so glad to see you and I hope to see you again next month. And I hope you have a wonderful day and rest of your month. And thank you for coming.
Thanks Thank a lot, you, Tiffany. Tiffany. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Bye, and everyone. Thanks, Andrea.